Psalm 51, verse 4, King James Version Bible. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Look at the Bible, and let's look at a tale of two kings. Look at King David, King Saul. King David was a man after God's own heart. When King David messed up and sinned, man, he fell on his knees and repented. He didn't make excuses. He didn't point the finger. He didn't pass the buck. He didn't say, woe is me. He didn't try to make light of his sins. He confessed his sins to God. Plainly, thoughtfully, prayerfully, humbly, meekly, and God forgave him. King Saul, on the other hand, was a man who made excuses. He was always making excuses for things he did wrong. It was never his fault. Somebody else made him do this, or someone else drove him to this, or he was, you know, like most Christians today, just not accountable for what he did and for his sins. You see, that's the problem. God, Jehovah God, his son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the Triune, the Three in One, they created the heavens and the universe. Most people think it was just God, but the Bible says Jesus and the Holy Spirit helped create the world. Jehovah God ruled over the Bible days with an iron hand, but he also had love in his heart. And he would forgive when people would come to him contritely and humbly to ask forgiveness. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and he became our, and rose again on the third day, he became our intercessor. He became our person we pray to that goes to God in the very throne room and, and just intercedes for us when we pray. And when we pray, if we've done wrong, first of all, the saddest thing is most of the church don't even recognize sin anymore. They're under the lie that started in the Garden of Eden when Satan told Eve that you will not surely die when you eat this fruit. And she didn't die physically, neither did Adam. They died spiritually that day. Once saved, always saved, was born in the Garden of Eden. Go back to Genesis 3 and check it out. And then go to Revelation 3 and check it out, where Jesus Christ says that if you do not finish the race with a spotless garment, he will blot your name out of the book of life, and he will not acknowledge you before the Father and the angels. And he was talking to the church of Sardis, and again, I've got a video on it. In the Bible days, you couldn't belong to a church unless you were a born-again, true blue Christian. Not like today, you had to be in the Bible days. So he's talking to backslidden Christians. And the problem is, most Christians today, that lie that started in the Garden of Eden from Satan has just exploded. And the majority of the church believes now that they don't have to repent of their sins, that they just live a carefree life. Some will say, of course, that they don't want to sin, and some will say they can sin repeatedly over and over again and never repent, and some can say... They have all kinds of things to say. But again, they're living a lie. We have to, the Bible says about 200 times that we have to fall on our knees and repent of sin after we're saved. <coughs> this is not works. We're saved by grace and grace alone. Works don't save us. Works don't keep us saved. But we must repent of sins after being saved. It's not works, it's repentance. That's a big, big difference. Jesus Christ died for all sins, past and present only. But when we do repent of our sins, those of us who are living the right way, the way the Bible commands, the very tiny few of us who are endangered species, we're not extinct like, the, like most of the church. Are we praying sincerely and earnestly and with all of our heart? Are we asking Jesus Christ to forgive us of those sins and, and just feeling terrible about it? Because I'm telling you, my friends, like I've said many times, if you're Holy Spirit filled from head to toe, whenever you sin, you cannot sit down even for a few minutes and rest. Not even, I can't sit down for, for 10 seconds and rest after I sin. I have to immediately repent because the Holy Spirit is my conscience. He keeps me on the straight and narrow. Most Christians don't have the Holy Spirit in their heart anymore. That He's packing the bags and left because they refuse to repent of, their, of all their sins, which have turned to iniquities, and they have a filthy, sin-ridden heart now. He won't live in a heart like that. He won't come back until you repent. When you do repent, make sure you're sincere. Make sure you're earnest. Make sure you're conciliatory. You're just asking Jesus to forgive you of those sins and, and just humbly and just just pouring yourself at his feet, falling at his feet and saying, Jesus, I know I've wronged. Please forgive me for what I've done. And he'll bring you right back up to where you need to be at. Time is short, my friends. The rapture is imminent. It's an A and B choice. N nothing hard about it. It's not even C or D. Just an A and B. Heaven or hell. Repent of your sins after you're saved and, and live for Jesus Christ and go to heaven or refuse to repent of your sins because you're proud, arrogant, and haughty, and because you butcher the Bible and go to hell. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you. 
I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for everything you do for us. You're so wonderful and awesome. I just pray that those who are backslidden, who, who won't believe the truth, that you would rebuke, correct, convict, teach them, that you would hound them, that you would just, just drag them down to sackcloth and ashes, if that's what it takes. Don't give them a moment's peace, happiness, joy, comfort, satisfaction, success, accomplishment, nothing in their lives until they fall on their knees and repent and come back to you. And those that are unsaved, I pray that you would also stay on them as well until they come to know you as Lord and Savior. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again the third day and went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Come live in my heart. Wash my heart white as snow. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Once you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Now, after you're saved, get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way that you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul daily if you read it. Pray to Jesus every day. He's your new best friend. He loves you. He wants to talk to you daily. Get water baptized in church as soon as possible. Pray to be sanctified from head to toe with the Holy Spirit. Filled with Him as you draw closer to Christ. What little time we have left before the imminent rapture. Take your Bible to church. When you watch videos online and wherever you're taught at, open the Bible and compare what they're saying to your Bible. What they say don't match, close your Bible if you're in church, get up and walk out, find a new church. If it's an online site or, or YouTube channel or Facebook, unsubscribe, unfriend them, turn it off and run away. It's very important, my friends. You have to be where the Word of God is preached the right way. It's preached that way here. I guarantee it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, get me to pray for anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet, contact me here. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. Didn't earn it, didn't deserve it. Praise the Lord, I've got it. And I'll pray every day through the power, honor, glory, strength, and might of Jesus Christ for a miracle to happen in your life, knowing that it'll happen if it's within his will. It's never anything to do with me, my friends. I'm the least in his kingdom, a tiny fish swimming in a huge ocean. Just like the Apostle Paul before me, I'm a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share the link to this channel, this video, other videos with friends, neighbors, co-workers, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere. Plant the seed and walk away. Let God water so it can grow. We won't get anybody to be convicted of their sins by preaching the soft soap, cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy fluff, the garbage you hear in most pulpits and all over the internet. It has to be the real word of God, the convicting word of God from the King James Version Bible, the way it's preached on this channel. Not because I'm anything, because God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you.